Hi, so for today, we're going to talk about the application of first order differential equation. And more specifically, we're going to talk about Newton's law of cooling. So, uh, what is Newton's law of cooling? Newton's law of cooling states that the rate at which a body cools is proportional to the difference between the temperature of the body and that of the medium. Okay, so the, 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 the object that cools is proportional to the difference between the temperature of the body or the substance to which it is being cooled and that of the medium. It means the temperature of the surrounding. Okay, and to put it mathematically, okay, the change in temperature, D uppercase T, with respect to time, is directly proportional to the difference of the temperature of the body T, okay, uppercase letter T, minus, okay, the temperature of the medium T sub M, or the temperature of the surrounding. So, in other words, if we are going to put this uh, into uh, an equation, okay, so we will be having a proportionality constant K, and we will be replacing that uh, proportionality, uh, direct proportionality sign with a unequal sign. So we have the change in temperature with respect to time is equal now to the uh, proportionality constant K multiplied by the difference of the temperature of the substance and the medium. So this is, will now be our rate equation. Okay, And this is a uh, differential equation. And if we're going to solve this in terms of variable separable, we will be arriving at a general solution of this, wherein we have this equation as T, the temperature of the body or of the substance, okay, is equal now to the temperature of the medium plus some arbitrary constant C multiplied by E raised to K, which is a proportionality constant, and Lowercase letter t is now our time. So in other words, okay, we will be solving the first order uh, differential equation of Newton's law of cooling using this general solution. But I will be showing you how this general solution was derived from this by variable separable. Okay, so we have to take note of this uh, equation or general solution when we are solving uh, problems related to Newton's law of cooling okay so this is a very interesting topic so let's try to solve some problems for example okay so sample problem number one a thermometer reading 10 degrees celsius is brought in a room whose temperature is 18 degrees celsius so obviously our subject here or our uh, substance here is the thermometer that has a reading of 10 degrees and it is brought in a room whose temperature is 18 degrees. Now, what is this 18 degrees? Celsius. 18 degrees Celsius is now the temperature of the surrounding or the temperature of the medium. Okay? So, one minute later, the thermometer reading is 14 degrees Celsius. Obviously, if you brought a thermometer that has a 10 degrees Celsius reading into a room whose temperature is 18 degrees Celsius, after some time, this thermometer... Uh, temperature would actually rise up, okay, as we have seen it here. One minute later, it is 14 degrees Celsius. So, the problem is, the question is, how long does it take until the reading becomes 16 degrees Celsius? Okay, but before that, we will be having our solution, okay? Solution would be, this is a Newton's law of cooling problem, okay, wherein we have this rate equation a while ago. Okay, by variable separable, okay, I can separate the variables this dt over t minus t sub m is equals now to k dt. Okay, so I'm going to integrate both sides of the equation. Okay, this is with respect to temperature. Okay, temperature over t minus t sub m. And I'm, uh, I'm integrating this with respect to time. So what will happen is that I'm going to integrate this. This is similar as integrating dx, let's say, dx over x minus 1. Because this would be a constant. Okay, We, would, we are actually integrating with respect to t. 
So, if I'm going to integrate that, that would be ln, okay, t minus t sub m is equal now, I can factor out k outside of the integral sign. The integral of dt is simply t. So, I would be having k t, okay, plus some arbitrary constant c. Okay? And if I'm going to exponentialize both sides of the equation, okay, such as we're going to do this, okay, so this would cancel. We will be having t minus t sub m is equal now to e raised to kt. By loss of exponent, we can rewrite this as multiplied by e raised to c. But again, e raised to c is simply equal to c. So I can simply replace this term as c. So we have now e raised to kt multiplied by c. And we have now the equation t minus t sub m is equal to ce raised to kt, okay? And if I'm going to transpose t sub m on the right side of the equation, we have t is equal to t sub m plus ce raised to kt. Hence, I've shown you the solution of this rate equation. And this is not our final answer. I've shown you the derivation of this uh, problem or the derivation of this uh, rate equation, differential equation. So we will be using this equation. Now, in solving problems like this, okay? So, uh, in this problem, we will be writing the given. Let's write the given, okay? The given here would be a thermometer reading 10 degrees Celsius is brought in a room. So, our initial temperature T of the thermometer is 10 degrees Celsius. Our temperature of the medium or the surrounding is 18 degrees Celsius. Okay? So, and we don't have any other given. We have many conditions, but for now, this is our given. And for sol solving problems involving Newton's law of cooling, it is um, uh, always, okay, we have to find the proportionality constant K because that is not given. Okay? And we also have to find the value of this C so that we can arrive at a formula that when we plug in any time T, we will be getting a temperature T. Okay? So because given this uh, uh, given, if you are going to plug it in in our equation, we have two unknowns. So definitely, what are we going to do is to find first C and K. So, let's now take a look at our first condition. A thermometer reading 10 degrees Celsius is brought in a room whose temperature is 18 degrees. So, it means that at time is equals to zero, okay? Time is equals to zero, initial time. Our temperature of the thermometer is 10 degrees Celsius. And the temperature of the surrounding or the medium is 18 degrees Celsius. Celsius. So, in our formula, we're going to plug this in in order for us to find first the C. Okay, what is the value of that C? Okay, so what are we going to If we're going to plug this in, time is equal to 0, we have T is equal to 10 is equal to 18 plus C multiplied by E raised to K times 0 because time is equal to 0. That is the initial condition. And we can see here, k times 0 is 0, e raised to 0 would become 1. And we are now free to find what is the value of c, okay? And by algebra, c is equal to negative 8, okay? Okay, so it's important to find this. It's important always to consider the uh, given condition, okay? So c is equal to negative 8. So let's go on to the second condition. One minute later, the thermometer reading is 14 degrees Celsius. Okay? So, one minute later, at time is equal to one minute, okay? The temperature now of the thermometer is 18 degrees or is 14 degrees Celsius. So, 14 degrees Celsius. Of course, the temperature of the medium is still the same. Okay? So, if plug it. In, into our equation, we have now our T is 14 degrees Celsius, okay, is now equal to 18 because that is our T sub M, 
Okay? Plus C, we have the value of C which is negative 8, E raised to K, multiplied by 1 because time is 1 minute. Okay? So, let me just uh, write again the equation. We use the equation, this equation, okay? Wherein we plug in the values based on the given condition. So, here are now, here is our values now. So, what are we going to do is that we're going to solve for K, okay? We're going, we're going to solve for K. So, we have 14 is equals to 18 oh, minus 8 E raised to K, okay? And if I'm going to perform some algebra here, okay, we will be having this equation, solving for k. So this would be, let's say, negative 4 over negative 8 is equal to e raised to k. This is 1 half is equal to e raised to k. If I'm going to take the ln of both sides, we have ln e raised to k. And simply to eliminate I did this, I did the natural logarithm on both sides to eliminate the E. Okay? So we can eliminate this ln of E. So the right side of the equation now becomes simply what? Simply K. Okay? And this is now our value of K. And as we can see here, we can now answer the problem. Okay? What is being asked in the problem? Because the, the problem asks us, how long does it take until the reading becomes 16 degrees? Celsius. How long does it take? So at time is equals to we don't know the temperature of the thermometer should be 16 degrees Celsius. If I'm not mistaken, let me just take a look at it again. Okay. So we don't know the time wherein we're the, the, the temperature of the thermometer will become 16 degrees Celsius. But according to our equation, we now have T sub M plus C E raised to KT. And according to our condition, we have now T is equals to 16. When will the temperature have a 16 degree Celsius? That is our condition. Our T sub M is still the same, 18. Our value of C is negative 8. E raised to K, wherein our value of K is ln of 1 half, okay, multiplied by T. Now, we are going to solve for T. As this T will give us the temperature of the thermometer that is at 16 degrees Celsius. Okay? So, by algebra again, 16 minus 18 is equals to negative 8 E ln 1 half times T. This is 1 half times T. Okay? So, I can rewrite the T in front. Okay? So, what will happen here is that 16 minus 18 is negative 2 over negative 8. E raised to T ln of 1 half, okay? That is still the same if I'm going to put T here eh, or T here because this is multiplication. Okay, negative 2 over negative 8 is 1 fourth is equals now to E raised to T ln of 1 half. So by properties of natural logarithm, I can put this as the exponent of this ln so that I can eliminate E raised to ln. So 1 half T. So, as you can see, E raised to ln would cancel out. And we are left now with our equation 1 fourth is equal now to 1 half raised to t. Okay? This is cancelled now. So, how am I going to solve for t without any calculator techniques or shift solve okay, in our calculator? So, I take the ln of both sides of the equation. Okay, if I take the ln of the both sides of the equation, by properties of ln, I can put this right side of the equation as, I can rewrite this, I have the exponent t ln of 1 half. And by purely solving for t, we have t is equal now to ln of 1 fourth over the ln of 1 half. So, if you're going to solve this in our calculator, okay, if you're going to solve this in our calculator, then our answer should be, if I'm not mistaken, 2 minutes. So, this should be our answer for our problem number 1. Okay, just a recap of what we did. First, we need to determine the value of C. 
and then determine the proportionality value, okay, proportionality constant, okay, and then solve for the temperature, okay. So the problem, the easy problem involving Newton's law of cooling involves uh, a situation like this, wherein we are going to find first the C and the K, and uh, uh, that's it. We're going to plug in our equation in order for us to find the temperature uh, or the time it takes for the temperature to have that temperature, okay? So, two minutes. So, let's try another problem. So, for number pro problem number two, okay, I'm not going to derive again the formula, but the formula that we're going to use is this, okay? Because I have derived it already to you, okay? So, a metal is heated up to 500 degrees Celsius. It is then exposed to a temperature of 38 degrees Celsius. So, okay, at initial condition, at time is equals to zero, we have a temperature of the metal as 500 degrees Celsius, and we have an ambient temperature or the temperature of the medium or temperature of the surrounding as 38 degrees Celsius. Okay, so, here, we need first to find C again, okay? Because the, the problem is asking, when will the temperature be 100 degrees Celsius? When? So, if we're going to plug this condition, okay, condition without first finding the C and the K, we will find ourselves in trouble because we cannot evaluate this. We cannot answer this directly, okay? So, if we're going to put 100 here, is equal to 38 plus, okay, when? The, the, the question is when. So you have two unknowns, C and K, okay? Three unknowns, I mean, C, K, and T. So you have first to find the value of C and K. So after two minutes, the temperature of the metal becomes 190 degrees Celsius. When will the temperature be 100 degrees Celsius? What is the temperature after four minutes? So we have not the initial condition. We have... 500 degrees Celsius, that's the temperature of the metal at time is equal to zero. And we have a uh, temperature of the medium, 38 degrees Celsius. Using our equation, we have 500 is equal now to 38 plus C e raised to K multiplied by zero. And we know that this is only one. Okay. And if we're going to solve for C, 500 is equal to 38 plus C, then therefore C is only 500 minus 38, and that is equivalent to 462, okay? That is the value of RC. Now, if you find the value of the C, proceed now to the second condition, okay? So, this is our first condition, okay? Second condition, okay? After 2 minutes, so we have time is equal to 2 minutes, okay? And the temperature of the metal becomes T, 190 degrees Celsius. The ambient temperature, the temperature of the surrounding is still uh, 38 degrees. Okay? So, in this given situation or condition, we have now to find the value of, again, decay. The, value, the proportionality constant. So, we have now, plugging it in, into our equation. This is our original equation. So, we have 190 is equal now to 38 plus, what is RC? That is 462 raised to K multiplied by 2 because 2 minutes, okay? So, we have 190 minus 38, okay, is equal to 462 raised to 2K, okay? That is our uh, uh, equation. And what will happen here is that if we furthermore uh, apply uh, algebra, we have 190 over minus 30 over 462 is equals to, uh, I'm sorry, okay, I'm sorry, no. 190 minus 38, so we have 190 minus 38, okay, we have E here, I forgot to write the E, okay, we have E here, so over 462, e raised to 2k, okay? If I get the natural logarithm of the both sides of the equation, we have ln of 190 minus 38 over 462 is equal now to ln e raised to 2k. 
and ln of e would cancel, okay, leaving this right side of the equation equivalent only to 2k. 190 minus 38 over 462, okay, is now equal to 2k. And to find k, simply ln of 190 minus 38 over 462, okay, over 2. That is now the value of our k. And if we're going to evaluate the value of our k up to 4 decimals, okay, that should be a negative 0 0.5558. Okay, this is our value of k uh, for our simplification. And now, finally, we can, we can actually find now the uh, first uh, question. So, when will the temperature be 100 degrees Celsius? Our model equation will be T is equals to T sub M, okay, plus 462 E raised to negative 0 0.5558 times T. More specifically, T is equals now to T sub M, our T sub M, I forgot to write, that is 38 plus 462 E raised to negative 0 0.5558 multiplied by E. Okay? So, our condition, when will the temperature be 100 degrees Celsius? That is our time. We don't know the time. and But our T should be 100 degrees Celsius. Okay? So, if we're going to plug this in our equation, we will be having what? We have 100 is equals to 38 plus 462 e raised to negative 0 0.5558 multiplied by t. Finding t because that is what we are after. How many minutes before the temperature of the metal uh, will be 100 degrees Celsius? So we have 100 minus 38 over 462. Some, some algebra here. Okay, just doing algebra here. And we have to find T without shift salt. So we have to uh, take the natural logarithm of the both sides of our equation. We have this 462 is equal to ln of E raised to negative 0 0.5558T. Okay. And what are we going to do? This would cancel. Okay. Leaving our right side of our equation as we have 100 minus 38 over... 462, this is our left side, and our right side would be negative 0 0.5558t. Okay? And solving for our t should be t is equals to ln of the uh, this function 100 minus 38 over 462 over negative 0 0.5558. So, if we are going to calculate that, the time it takes for the 100 degrees Celsius for the temperature of the metal should be 3.61 minutes. Okay? So, this should be our answer for the first question, when will the temperature be 100 degrees Celsius? Okay. Letter B, what is the temperature after 4 minutes? Okay. After 4 minutes. Okay, what is the temperature? As you can see, at time is equal to 4 minutes. 4 minutes. What is the temperature? Going back to our model equation, we have T is equal to T sub M, which is 38, okay, plus 462, E raised to negative 0 0.5558T. Okay? And we're going to plug in simply... The value of T is equal to 4 minutes here in our model equation. So we have T is equal to 38 <clears throat> plus 462 e raised to negative 0 0.5558 multiplied by simply 4 minutes. And the temperature that we should get is 88.01 degrees Celsius or 88 degrees Celsius. So that should be our answer for the second question of what will be the temperature of the metal after 
4 minutes. Okay, down to our last example for this problem or for this video, I, I mean. So, a thermometer is taken from an inside room to the outside where the air temperature is 5 degrees Fahrenheit. After 1 minute, the thermometer reads 55 degrees Fahrenheit and after 5 minutes, after 1 minute I mean, after 5 minutes, it reads 30 degrees Fahrenheit. What was the initial temperature of the therm thermometer when inside the room. So, here in this problem, we are asked for the initial temperature. We are not given for the initial temperature of the thermometer, but we are to find it. And as you can see here, we have uh, at least three conditions, okay? Okay, first, uh, uh, we are going to determine what is the temperature, okay? After one minute, the thermometer reads 55 degrees Fahrenheit. That's the first condition. Second condition, after 5 minutes, it reads 30 degrees Fahrenheit. And for the third condition, we're going to find the time is equal to zero because that is the initial temperature. Okay? That is what we are going to find. Okay? Initial temperature of the thermometer. So, if, it, if initial temperature of the thermometer, that means time is equal to zero. Okay? So, for our formula again, we have T is equal to T sub M plus CE raised to KT. So what are we going to do first is to consider all of the uh, given condition. For the first condition, okay, first condition, what is the initial temperature of the thermometer when inside the room? Okay, we know that the time should be equal to zero, okay? And the temperature, we don't know because that is the initial temperature, okay? At time is equal to zero, we don't know the T because that is what is being asked in this problem. But we know also the temperature of the medium, which is 5 degrees Fahrenheit. So if I'm going to plug this in our equation, okay, I don't know the T, okay, the T remains unknown. T sub M is 5 plus C E raised to K multiplied by 0, okay, because that is the initial, time is equal to 0. So our formula reduces to 5 plus C. Okay? So, let's just leave this here. Okay? So, what are we going to do again now is to move on to our condition again. At time is equals to 1 minute, okay, the thermometer reads 55 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay? So, if we're going to substitute it in our equation here, we have 55 is equals to 5 that's the ter uh, temperature of the medium, plus CE raised to K times 1. So we have 55 is equal to 5 plus CE raised to K. Okay, if I'm going to transpose this 5, 55 minus 5 is equal to CE raised to K. That should be 50 is equal to CE raised to K. So that should be our equation 1. Okay? We don't know the value of C and K here. Okay? Going now to our next condition, our next condition should be at time is equals to uh, 5 minutes, okay? 5 minutes, the temperature reading should be 30 degrees Fahrenheit. So if I'm going to plug it in our equation again here, so we have 30 is now equal to 5, plus C E raised to K times 5. Okay? So, 30 is equal to 5 plus C E raised to 5K. Transposing 5, 3, 30 minus 5 is equal to C E raised to 5K. And we have 25 C E raised to 5K. That should be our equation 2. Now, I can plug in any of the equation, okay, to find K. Or to find C. So in this case, I'm going to use uh, from the equation 2, okay? From the equation 2 or the equation uh, 1. So we can uh, perform substitution, okay? So from equation 1, I can also divide, okay? From equation 1, but I will be performing substitution, okay? From equation 1, we have 50 is equal to C, E raised to K. I have to get C. So, in, in terms of C, 50, E raised to K. 
So, I'm going to substitute this to equation 2. Or to equation 2. Right. Okay? So, that is the same C. So, we have 25 is equal now to 50 e raised to k. Okay? e raised to k multiplied by e raised to 5k. So, as you can see here, 25 is equal to 50. Okay? e raised to 5k over e raised to k. Okay, we can simplify this by loss of exponent as 25 is equal to 50. This should become e raised to 4k. It should minus. Okay, the exponent should minus because this is a division. And we have a uh, the same uh, is here. So, I have to find k. In this case, I have eliminated c. So, 25 over 50 is equal to e raised to 4k. And 25 over 50 reduces to 1 half e raised to 4k. So if I'm going to take the ln of the both sides of the equation, we have ln e raised to 4k. This should cancel. And we have ln of 1 half is equals now to 4k. And computing 4k, we have ln of 1 half over 4. Okay? Of which, if we're going to calculate this, this should be negative 0 0.173287. Okay? But for more accurate uh, solution, or if your professor does not allow you calculator, you can use this, right? So, but in this case, we have simplified this as this. So, we have found the value of k. And if we're going to substitute this k in any hour of our equation, okay, here or here, we can find c. Definitely, we can find c. So, if we're going to substitute that, okay, for example, in this uh, in this equation so if we're going to substitute c is now equal to 50 over e raised to k negative 0 0.173287 okay <laughs> so our answer should be 59.46 so that should be our value for c this should be our value for our k and we can now answer the problem. What was the initial temperature of the thermometer inside the room? Okay. We can now answer that. So we have T is equals to 5. Okay. Plus C. What is our C? 59.46. Plus 59.46. So our initial temperature should now be 64.46 degrees Fahrenheit. So, this should be our answer, okay? It is necessary to find K so that you can find the value of C, even though we only need C here. Because if, in order for us to find C, we have to find the value of K. So, our answer, the initial temperature should be 64.46 degrees Fahrenheit. And again, we found that by... Uh, the initial condition that we have time is equal to zero, okay? Because that is the initial condition. And again, thank you so much for listening and God bless you.